Mobile music producers, if you want to make music faster, then this video is for you, because today I'll be dropping five different ways that you can improve your workflow inside of Cubasis 3, right after this. Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am your host, Vortex, from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is release weekly videos teaching people how to produce music on their iOS device. And since I forgot to record this part yesterday and had to shimmy it into the video, let's now go back to yesterday's Vortex. Now, what do we mean by improve your workflow? Well, we just basically mean speeding up the process at which you make music and to keep you from wasting too much time on unnecessary tasks that can ultimately just end up preventing you from finishing a track altogether. Because for me, and I know this is true for a lot of other producers as well, but for me, if I don't get something out fast enough or get an idea out fast enough, I just end up getting bored with it. I find it really important to keep my creativity high while I'm fighting against that repetitive fatigue that naturally comes from listening to the same thing over and over again. And hey, if you do enjoy producing music on your iPhone or iPad, then definitely check out our latest podcast episode where we discuss topics just like these with companies in the industry that you know and trust, such as IK Multimedia, Baby Audio, and much more. And so, without further ado, let's get right into these five tips that dramatically improved my workflow inside Cubasis. Now, before we get started, folks, just remember that these are just our workflow improvement tips, so definitely make sure to leave yours in the comments below so that we can all learn together. All right, now let's go ahead and get started with our very first tip. And that very first tip that we'll be talking about is going to be to organize your sounds. Now, how I separate my sounds is basically into two different sections. And the first of those is going to be my full sample library. This is where all of my samples will live, regardless of if I'm working with them or not. And then I have my media library directly inside of Cubasis that contains the files that I know I'll be working with in virtually every project. Now, the app that I use to browse my main sample library with is going to be something called SampleCrate. Now, this app is very similar to the Files app built inside of iOS, with the difference being that this allows you to actually preview files without having to go to a second screen. So, for example, if we just scroll down to Mobile Music Pro here, and go into our Mobile Music Pro samples. We'll just choose our latest sample pack, which is the Cyberpunk sample pack. And of course, we give you the MIDI, Apple Loops, and all that good stuff, but we're going to go into the Waves folder. And let's just go into the Drum One Shots and maybe the Claps. Now, when I tap on one of these to preview the file, you'll see that it instantly comes up right down here without having to navigate to an entirely different screen. Whereas the Files app will bring you to a new screen just to preview that one single file and force you to go back again to continue browsing the rest of the files. So I really like using this app for that reason. And then when I put this into compact mode here, push this off to the side and open up Cubasis, it makes it really easy to drag and drop files into my DAW. For example, if I pull up Digistix here, this is our main drum machine app of choice here. We could just make this a little bigger and then move our sample crate app over to the left. And next we can just take any of these files and bring them on over to our pads and drop them right in. So it's really easy to audition the sound first and then drag it on over to our drum machine. And now we can hide this and just start entering in our patterns. All right, perfect. And again, that was our main sample library, but then we also have a media library here that's built inside of Cubasis in the top left hand corner where it says media. Now here again is where I keep the files that I know I'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, like effects sounds, if we go into the effects folder here, you can see I have all my main folders that I use for effects, including a cymatics pack, a pack from Dean at electronasounds.com, Echo Soundworks, and of course our very own effects toolkit for Mobile Music Pro. And our pack, just like the rest of the packs here, will contain all the effects that you need, including things like downlifters, risers, sub drops, impacts, and much more. So we can easily just go into our reversed, find one that works well. There we go. Audition them like that, and then go ahead and drag it on to our timeline here. Now, in addition to just our audio files here, like effects and such, I also have the sample packs that I know I'll be using in the My Samples folder. And this is all the Mobile Music Pro sample packs, because of course I know I'll be using this in my day-to-day -day projects and on the live streams. But in addition to the audio section over here, Cubasis also gives us a MIDI section. And in the MIDI section here, I keep all of our MIDI packs for Mobile Music Pro, including our packs like Neo Soul, Modern Pop, 
progressive rock, and so on. The media browser makes it really handy to have all your folders lined up here, so you can just hop on in one, maybe load up some chords or some bass, and throw that right into your DAW, and just start playing. Having everything at the ready like this so that I can just grab what I need when I need it has definitely helped improve my workflow and made the actual process of producing music a lot more fun. Because remember again, the whole point of this video and the tips within it are to keep you at your most creative for the longest amount of time possible. And now for the second workflow tip in today's video, which is going to be to use keyboard shortcuts. Now, of course, if you are out and about, you might not have a keyboard with you. But if you are back in the studio, then the time saved from using these keyboard shortcuts can really start to add up. And in addition to just the regular standard things that you'll get like copy and paste, you'll also get the ability to split, solo all, and mute all, and of course the space button that's going to allow you to start and stop your project. And that's probably the one I use the most, because it's just so simple. All you have to do is just hit that space bar, and you're good to go. We can then start selecting a track, and use our right arrow to start selecting individual regions. And now we can just copy and paste this, copy that, and then paste it. And of course, you can quickly undo and redo that with the Command Z button, or redo that with the Shift Command Z button. Now, before I go any further with these shortcuts, it is important to remember that Cubasis actually has two different settings for your shortcuts. If we go into the Setup Options in the top right hand corner, and then navigate to the General tab here on the left hand side, you will find a Keyboard Shortcuts option here on the far right. And here you'll actually be able to choose from the default settings or Cubase specific settings. Now, me personally, I always keep it on the default. Since I don't really use Cubase on the desktop, I'm not familiar with its shortcuts. And what's also cool is that Cubasis makes it really easy to zoom in and out with these shortcuts, just basically using the plus and minus buttons. So if we just use the minus button here, just by itself, you can see that it will zoom out horizontally. But if I hold down the option button with the minus button at the same time, you can see that it minimizes or zooms out vertically. And then we can zoom back in there with the shift, option, and plus button or we can zoom in horizontally by just holding down the shift button and the plus button. So just super simple to get to where you need to go. Once you really start memorizing all these buttons, it makes moving around really easy. And there's even a shortcut for quantize as well, which is just the Q button. But if you'd like to see all of the shortcut options, just simply hold down the command button and Cubasis will bring up a list of all of the shortcuts that you can then just scroll on through and see all the ones that they support. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them here. Making navigating around the DAW very, very simple. And we can just tap anywhere to close out of that. So let's try to use these shortcuts just to do a couple of quick tasks here. So let's first zoom in vertically a little bit here. Then we'll just make sure we're on the correctly selected track here. And then we'll select our event by using the right and left arrows. And we'll just put our cursor right here after bar two. Split our track simply with the command S option. And now we can select either of these parts here. And then we can delete this secondary event here with the delete button here. We'll then select our first event again here with the right arrow, and then we can just copy and paste this with the Command-C and Command-V, and then quantize with the Q button. In fact, we can even create a new MIDI track with the Command-N button. We can make sure we're on that track using the down arrows here, and of course we could just start playing. We can rewind to the beginning with the comma button here, and start recording with the R button. Then we can stop the recording with the R button once more, and then stop playing the whole track entirely with the space button. And again, if we don't like that, we can control undo, really simple, with the shift button and Z button. And of course, memorizing all these shortcuts might take you some time. So in order to help with that, we actually have mouse pads with all of the keyboard shortcuts right on them. We can make this bigger so you guys can see. But it will have all of the standard Cubasis 3 shortcuts on there. And you can find that right now on our website at mobilemusicpro.com. We actually have mouse pads on there that can also help you with your scales as well. So don't be sleeping on these shortcuts, fam, because they can definitely end up saving you some time. And now the next workflow tip that we're going to be talking about today is going to be to rename your MIDI clips. And we've actually talked about this tip before on the channel, but I do want to bring it up again because it has helped me so much. Now right now, Cubasis, unlike its desktop counterpart Cubase, doesn't come with an arrangement track, but we can sort of shimmy one together by just using audio clips. So first I'm going to show you what we mean by that, and then I'll show you what actually used in a couple of my projects. So to do that, what we're gonna do is just draw a MIDI clip here. 
just tap on the draw button and go ahead and draw a midi clip anywhere that you'd like line that up and then what we can do is double tap and on the bottom left hand corner is where it will display the name of the clip and that is also where you can edit the name so if we just tap on that name we'll be greeted with a rename dialog here and let's just give this a name like intro and hit enter and we can even give this specific midi clip here a different color so we can tap on this clip go to color and maybe make that yellow now what we can do is repeat this process and create even more clips with different names and different colors so that we can eventually build out a full arrangement track and something that you probably want to do on your arrangement track is to make sure that there are no instruments so we can just tap on the piano go to the list browser here hit the back button and choose no instrument now we can quickly see that hey we're not trying to use this track to make music or rather we're not trying to get any sound or audio out of this track because we know that there is just an x here so that it can remain just a dedicated arrangement track now let's bring up a couple of different projects and show you how we use this now here we have one of our edm projects pulled up and if we scroll in vertically here to make these a little bit bigger you can see that we have in fact labeled these different midi regions at the top such as verse one build up one chorus one and if we zoom in horizontally here we can see we also have one for intro as well so again this really helped guide me when i'm actually creating my song and arranging out my song so that i know where to actually put stuff and when you zoom out fully like this you can really get a good idea of how the song is going to flow from beginning to end so though this is a bit of a smaller tip and we have mentioned it before on the channel it is still extremely important in my day-to-day -day workflow and the fourth tip that we'll be talking about today to improve your workflow is going to be to create and save your presets now most apps let you favorite and save your presets pretty easily for example let's just pull up synth master 2 here and if we look under the browse button here at the top tap on browse we can see that next to all of these presets is a little star icon and when you tap that that will make that preset appear in your favorites category now not every single app has this feature but most of them do and this can be a huge time saver to go through all of your favorite presets and all of your favorite apps and then tap that star button to have the presets at the ready for whenever you need them so if we tap our favorites section here, tap on my favorites, you can see that we have in fact gone through and starred a bunch of the different presets inside of this app. Man, there's so many good ones in this app too. Ah, oh, yes, I remember this one. And there is so many great presets in this app, but I want to talk about presets that are native to Cubasis 3 now. You may or may not know that every single plugin inside of Cubasis actually comes with a bunch of different presets. So if we look at the channel strip here and tap on channel strip, go to factory presets, you can see there's already some great mixing presets in here for kicks, basses, pianos, drums, guitars, synthesizers, and just so, so much more. So if you are new to mixing, this can be a great starting point. And if you aren't new to mixing, then definitely make sure to save your presets so you can always have them handy right there to pull up whenever you need them. So definitely make sure that you're taking advantage of these presets, going through all your apps and favoriting your favorite presets, and then saving and backing up those presets. And now for the fifth and final tip in today's video, and that's going to be to use templates. Now Cubasis makes it pretty easy to use templates. All you have to do is throw one of your projects that you want to become a template into the templates folder. And actually, every single one of our sample packs, including our brand new completely free Essentials of Cyberpunk pack, will come with a template. Because we know templates are important to new producers to help them get started. But of course, templates cannot just be for new producers. It can also be for veteran producers to speed up their workflow. So if we do start to open up our media bay here at the top left-hand corner where it says media, and scroll all the way up here, we can see that there is a folder called templates. And if we open that up, we can see that Steinberg has included some really great templates including an electric guitar vocal, electric piano and vocal, but Mobile Music Pro has a bunch of templates. Again, one in every single one of our sample packs, both our free and premium sample packs, you can see that they're starting to add up here. <laughs> we, we have a bunch of them, including things like pop, metal, melodic house, cyberpunk, trap, lo-fi, and much more. And as we mentioned, when you do put a project in here, it automatically becomes a template. So when you double tap on it, for example, we'll just double tap on our cyberpunk template, it'll then ask you to name a new project based off of that template. So we'll just call this like a cyberpunk one and then hit enter. And now we've created a brand new project from that template called cyberpunk one. And meanwhile, that template project will remain unchanged. So if we take a look here at this project, you can see that it has a bunch of stuff that you may need. For example, we've already got a sidechain track and there's already a drum bus and a bass bus. 
And of course, all of these tracks will already have EQs on them and compressors on them so that you can just get started way sooner without having to worry about all that every single time that you create a new song. If we zoom out a bit here, we can see that there is in fact an entire arrangement for you in the form of audio and MIDI clips that has been built. This way, if you're new to producing, you can kind of know where things are supposed to sit. And then if you're a veteran producer, you can instantly get a feel for how you want to arrange your track. Now, as far as templates inside of Cubasis go, you still have to rely on just these project files. There's no way, for example, to just export out your effect chains. But nevertheless, using Cubasis templates can definitely improve your workflow. If nothing else, I find it extremely useful just to have something to look at instead of a blank screen. And another great idea for your templates is to already have some music in there so that you can really set your vibe. Because when you work with a ton of genres like I do, you can sort of get lost in the nitty grittiness and the exact patterns, exact BPM, and so forth. But when you load up a new project and have a little bit of music already ready to go, you can just instantly fall into that vibe. For example, we did pull up our cyberpunk project. So let's hear what we have for our 16 bars of music. Let's just zoom in a little bit here, vertically and horizontally, and hit play. So again, just super helpful to have all of these tracks ready to go, like your drum tracks, melody tracks, arpeggio tracks, and then have your regular plugins already inserted, such as your EQs and your compressors, so that you can remove a lot of unnecessarily repeated tasks and start making music that much quicker. All right, and now it's time again for our final thoughts. And if you are still rocking with us, we just can't thank you so much for being here, especially those folks that are here every single Wednesday and Friday to watch our live streams and our live premieres. Now we really do hope that one or all of these tips can help inspire you to make music faster. And of course, it's not just about the speed, we're not just making music to see how fast we can make it or anything like that, but rather it's all about staying creative and in that flow state that wants to keep going, that wants to keep improving, and ultimately wants to finish the damn track. Because just like you probably, I have a ton of unreleased tracks, where I got bored in the middle somewhere and just didn't feel like the track was worth finishing. But the reality of course is that music is 100% subjective, meaning that some of the tracks that you don't like might be somebody else's hit single. And hey, perhaps you can use some of these tips to create a song and enter into our brand new contest that just started last Wednesday on September 7th and it's going to go all the way through Wednesday, September 21st. This contest is completely free to enter and contains over $500 in combined prize money. Plus, we were lucky enough to land some amazing volunteers to help judge this contest, including the world-renowned YouTuber Jacob Hack and the German electronic music producer who helped us with a couple of different packs named Cut and Glue. For further rules, prizes, and details on how to enter this free contest, head over to our website at modemusicpro.com contest. And if you do want to be kept up to date when we have new contests like these or new free sample packs, or new giveaways, then definitely sign up for our completely free newsletter at mobilemusicpro.com slash newsletter. And so, until next time, everybody, keep talking music, and we'll see you later. Hey everybody, Vortex here, and if you're not aware yet, we now have over 100 fully edited mobile music tutorial videos. And we make music every single Wednesday live on our channel right inside of Cubasis on our iPad. Plus, we also have a bunch of free sample packs, guides, and more at our website at mobilemusicpro.com free. And so if you are into that sort of thing, producing music on your iPhone or iPad, then definitely make sure to subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on the channel that we know you'll love.